South African Airways is a cosmic and national disaster way beyond the point of rescue. It cannot be rescued anymore with bailouts or with uh, private equity partners or privatization or anything like that. It is, is beyond that point. It is now simply a shell of debt. What it has is plans on lease and those are long lease agreements that run up an enormous amount of debt which it's not going to be able to cover. And this is another one of these weird inheritances from apartheid that the post-apartheid government loves. South African Airways is a direct transfer of wealth, not from taxpayers to people who fly. Everyone says it's at taxpayers' expense. That's a myth. The government doesn't go and collect more tax in order to bail out South African Airways. What it does is it diverts money that was budgeted for the poor, for housing, for education, for policing. And every time you fly, if you look down at a shanty town or a settlement, say to yourself, those people are subsidizing my seat by over 500 rand. They should be embarrassed. South African Airways uh, got a new temporary transitional uh, intermittent uh, acting uh, chief executive recently, and the first thing she did was ask for another four billion. It's been an average of uh, about five billion a year, now something like 50 billion rand bailouts gone to South African Airways. Now that is enough, so people can understand this, for half a million RDP houses. Half a million households could be housed with that money. Instead it's spewed into the air uh, with South African Airways planes. Every time they take off, they make a new loss. Even though they say they have profitable routes, they don't. None of the routes are profitable. They only appear profitable because they don't include overheads and lease agreements and maintenance agreements and so on. Turnaround strategies make assumptions that make it clear they would actually never rescue South African Airways. For example, the latest one, under, under Chihana, who's now left, it made an assumption that the fuel price is half of what it actually is. It made an assumption that the exchange rate on the rand is 10 rand to the dollar, whereas in fact it's 15. So that every lease agreement and every purchase of fuel is, uh, is 50 to 150 percent more than is in the turnaround strategy. Once you make these very simple adjustments, you can see that it's not a turnaround strategy at all. It's a simply a strategy to prolong the agony. You could make a case for the state running enterprises to fix roads or to provide electricity or hospitals or water education, because that goes to the poor. This is a particularly sick version of thinking the state should do something, because it goes directly to the rich. And then you get this phony argument that it supplies some sort of strategic service. You can fly anywhere in the world, and the worst that you'll have to do is spend a few minutes in a transit lounge. Uh, and then we saw when South African Express uh, was taken out because of safety reasons and couldn't fly, within hours every single passenger was being carried by private airlines. Shows you that it's not necessary and serves no useful purpose whatsoever. Now as far as the employees are concerned, the pilots and the staff, let's understand their fate. South African Airways used to be 97% of the South African domestic market. When airline competition was allowed, it's now dwindled and it's now at about 20%. The trajectory is very clear. If it carries on along the same trajectory, and there's no reason to assume it'll change, South African Airways will have disappeared by about 2025. And that means nobody will have a job at all. So in the interest of the existing employee, employees and the pilots, we are of the view that you can do a rescue operation and what you can rescue is the brand. What you can do is a deal with a big international airline, Emirates or British Airways or United or somebody, and you say to them, you fly South African Airways. You come to South Africa, register a company, uh, you register the brand. It'll be seamless. The passengers won't even know there's a difference, but there will be a new owner and a profitable owner. And then the airline will grow because it can now be some sort of hub between South America and Australia and New Zealand or whatever it might be, Singapore, uh, Mauritius. So what you do is you create a South African airline owned by a major proven successful international airline uh, that operates from South Africa and grows and in the process of negotiation you negotiate either severance packages for the staff that are going to be laid off or you 
better still, you negotiate that the existing ones will all be taken over and more will be employed because the airline will grow instead of contract. To get the government to do this and stop this nonsense, end this apartheid farce, People keep thinking it can be recapitalized. And every time there's a guarantee or there's a subsidy, they keep saying it's recapitalized. Well, that's never happened. All they do is they provide finance for the operating losses. To capitalize South African Airways, you're looking at something like between 50 and 70 billion rand. Uh, so in other words, the ba bailout that's looked for for operating expense is 21 billion. But you would need another 50, 60, 70 billion, far better, close it down, or better still, let some viable, profitable, successful international airline take over and fly the brand for us. What they get into the deal is our existing landing slots, our bilateral agreements, and of course the value of the South African brand, and South Africans will have something to be proud of instead of to have this national embarrassment.